Hello. Hi, can you hear me in the back? Yep, okay, good. Um, hey, I'm Anand Thacker. I work at Development Seed in DC, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm sort of gonna pick up where Kevin left off uh, talking about um, satellite imagery as a data set, not just a picture. Um, and before I go any further, I, really, I have a confession to make, which is that I've never seen a single Terminator movie. Um, so that means that all this Skynet stuff that I've been hashtagging and putting on the title here is actually me being a total poser. Um, but uh, I think in a way that's appropriate because actually along with Skynet, um, I know almost nothing about everything else on that screen other than maybe my name. Um, so I'm an amateur at machine learning. I know I'm a total amateur at remote sensing and I, uh, my number of OSM edits is like less than five, I think, so shame. Um, uh, but I'm hoping to up that number quite a bit pretty soon. Um, so uh, that's all just to say um, maybe that if I have one goal for this talk, it is to convey that all of this stuff, this machine learning stuff, is something that um, amateurs like me and maybe you can do. And so um, I'm excited by the prospect of having this community kind of bring that in um, into what we do as, you know, as do-it-yourself, making the world better kinds of um, folks. Okay, so, um, oh, uh, one more preliminary. Uh, image credits, uh, so any satellite or aerial looking imagery that you see here is all from Mapbox Satellite um, tiles, and at the zoom levels I'm using them at, uh, that means either NAEP or Digital Globe. Uh, so, thanks, Kevin. Um, Okay, so first, let me just say a little bit about why. Um, I think some of this may be um, sort of uh, not particularly new ideas here, but uh, why, why have I thought that doing machine learning with um, <clears throat> satellite imagery and OpenStreetMap data is a good idea and why we should do it? Um, so sort of three answers. Um, first answer is, and excuse me a minute, I have, I have notes on this computer that I'm also gonna try to keep up, okay. Um, so the first answer is that uh, the kinds of stuff that we want to do with machine learning, so using it as, a, uh, sorry, with uh, satellite imagery, using it as a data, oh, using it as a data set, um, is uh, a lot of it's hard. So classifying images, extracting features from images, it's 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 hard. And a certain class of machine learning algorithms, particularly deep learning, seems to love these problems, especially in recent years. They've just started eating these problems for breakfast. Um, and so, yeah, so what do I mean? Well, uh, so like, so this is, a, this is from a paper a few years ago by some machine learning researchers. What they found was that uh, uh, road detection, uh, while it sort of works in rural areas and things like that, um, it, it, it's, not, it's not like there. Like we don't have road detection just happening um, in production. Uh, well, we didn't then, and from what I can tell, we, it, that hasn't changed all that much. Um, Love to be wrong. Uh, so that's that's the problem being hard. Um, here's the problem being easy for machine learning. So um, this is from Google a couple of years ago, uh, the ImageNet machine learning challenge or collection of challenges. Um, that uh, generally speaking, computer vision problems seem to do seem to be quite tractable for deep learning, machine learning um, uh, models. Uh, so this is reason one uh, because it can, because machine learning can handle this stuff. Um, that's one reason we should do it. Um, another reason we should do it uh, with OSM data is that putting OSM together with satellite imagery makes a really great fit for machine learning. And to say why, I'm gonna say a little bit about what machine learning actually is. Um, so if you, you kind of already know this, then bear with me a little bit. And if you don't, then also bear with me because this will be a totally inadequate explanation. Um, so what is it? Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about a particular type of machine learning. Um, if you wanna have a sort of broader, um, sorry. <clears throat> if you want a sort of broader look at how to do, like what, what it would look like to do machine learning with geospatial data, check out Stuart Lin's talk from Foster GNA this year. Um, it's, it's a great overview, it's got some really cool examples, it's got some good resources. Um, okay, but uh, supervised learning. Uh, so you basically, what you have is a model. Okay, and the model is a black box. Okay, it's, it, it takes some kind of input and it gives you some kind of output, but you don't really know too much about what's going on inside. 
Um, it's got some sort of knobs and dials that change what's going on inside, but you don't really know what those do, okay? That's your model. Uh, and then you have training data, and what training data is is a bunch of, imp like a bunch of example inputs, and uh, for each of those examples, the true or expected thing that you want from the model. Uh, so, that's, uh, uh, so that's your training set. Um, and generally it's like reasonably large, but it's not as large as all the data that you want to deal with. So for example, you might have, um, you know, uh, uh, images, um, the, so that picture would be the input, and then these boxes with the correct description or whatever would be the output. Uh, or you might have like uh, recordings of people talking and the correct textual transcription of them, that would be like another set of input and expected output, okay? Uh, and then, so you, so you have that, and then what you do is you train it, and it's, it's a sort of weirdly simple idea. Some of the details are complicated, but that's for the machine learning researchers to deal with. Um, for us, it's a pretty simple idea. You take your model, this black box, um, it starts out totally random, and you just apply it to the inputs, and obviously it's just wrong, right? Because it, it doesn't know anything. Um, so it just gets the wrong answer for everything, like quite very wrong answers. Then you compare those wrong answers to what you expect, and you get sort of a calculated error. Um, and then based on that error, you, uh, you just tweak the model a little bit. So for instance, if, you were, if the outputs were numbers, and let's say you, you did it the first time and the numbers were way too high, then you would just slightly adjust the knobs to kind of try to steer the model in the direction of giving you lower numbers, and then you try again. Right? Now that's a simplification, but that's basically what's happening, and, and actually, and when I say you're doing this, really your script is doing this, like the machine learning, the open source library that you're using to do it is doing it for you, right? But this is basically what's happening when you train a model. Um, okay, so with that, with that description of machine learning, um, that's, so the second reason that I think this is a good idea is that um, with satellite imagery as the inputs and OpenStreetMap as a potential source of sort of annotations or knowledge about that imagery, um, we have a really great potential source of training data or multiple sources of training data. So that's answer two. But so answers one and two are really about why we could do this, um, but I guess maybe a bigger question is why we would do it, why would we want to, or why we should do it. Um, but I sort of also think that that's probably not, um, that's probably not one that needs pr much explanation here, right? Uh, why should we automatically pull road features out of satellite images? Uh, well, because we can improve the map and we can use that additional insight to improve how we use OSM to improve the world. So uh, we can improve the map by, if we can automatically know where the roads are, then we can prioritize tracing candidates. Maybe we can even initialize uh, the, the, the new tracing that we wanna do with some geometries that a person then can just go fix. Maybe that's easier than tracing it from scratch. Um, maybe we can, uh, maybe we can even uh, have, get suggested additional tags or metadata for existing features, right? So these are um, pretty clear ways that we could improve the map if we could do some automated um, extraction. Um, and then improving the world, if we're, um, if we're using OpenStreetMap to help um, uh, like find people in a, a crisis or uh, find people that are uh, not connected or something like that, um, that's great. Uh, and getting people out there to map, uh, to improve the map when we need it is, Obviously, something we're always going to want to do, but in the meantime, while we're waiting to get that map filled in, why not have the computer give us like slightly imperfect but um, more comprehensive data to to work off of? While we're, you know, um, so uh, okay, so that's why. Um, before I dive into some of the experiments that I've been doing and some of the failures and results that I've been getting, uh, let me just say a couple things about uh, some machine learning work that. Uh, some similar work that I've seen other people doing recently. Um, this is by, I'm sure this is not all of it, this is just the stuff I've come across. Um, so one example, Deep OSM, you may have seen this. Um, actually it's uh, built by Andrew Johnson, I think, um, who's in the audience here. Um, so this is really cool, it's using actually a neural network to, uh, to um, and sorry if I get this slightly wrong, but uh, I think what it's doing is using a neural network to essentially estimate the the likelihood that a particular um, spot in the map is uh, has the road misregistered. So you know, it's the the model thinks that the road is that there is a road that maybe there isn't a road, but there been in OSM there is a road, and so that suggests that something's wrong. 
And um, what's really cool is that this is built, he's built this into a, uh, you know, like a, a working live site that actually uh, ranks um, like scenes and spots uh, by the likelihood of error and then gives you a way to, gives you a link to fix them in, um, in, in the ID editor. Uh, and th there it is leading to my second OSM edit. Um. Uh, another example you may have seen is Terra Pattern. Uh, Terra Pattern is a very different and quite creative idea, I thought. Um, so they use, this is a team out of Carnegie Mellon that, um, that used, uh, that trained a deep neural network to look at um, satellite imagery and essentially classify it according to um, some of the metadata, the OSM metadata that is in that scene um, or in that spot on, uh, uh, in OSM. Um, but, so, but the way they use that is very interesting. What they do is they built this app where you can click on a spot and what it does is it looks at how the neural network classifies that spot and then it searches for any other imagery in that city that is classified in, a, in basically the same way, that where the model thinks that it has the same categories. Um, and the result is that you get this really cool visual search. So you click on a spot and you get a bunch of other places that look, so there you clicked on a bridge and you get all these other bridges. And it's not just doing a visual comparison, it's actually using the models like quote unquote insights um, to anthropomorphize a little bit. Um, to find other stuff, so that's really cool. Um, okay, so Skynet experiments. Um, shoot. Sorry about this. Okay, so um, my like sort of big goal that I wanted to uh, like experiment towards was just tracing the roads. Um, much like uh, the Facebook talk some of you may have seen, the, it was, I thought, hey, it'd be cool to get roads automatically out of images. Um, so, um, what I did, um, so I found this, uh, this model that, uh, this paper um, that some researchers at the University of Cambridge released uh, late last year. It's a model that they called SegNet, and, base, and here's what it does. You can see it. So the top is the inputs, and the middle is the ground truths, and the, um, the bottom is what, the seg, what SegNet thinks or sees in the image. Um, and so I saw this, and I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. It's like finding the toilet, right? And it can see the couch. Um, so all I need is, I, and oh, and they, they release this model, open source, um, the code that they used to train it, and also even the... Um, the, tra the, the final trained model. So you could actually just grab it and use it right off the bat uh, with no training, which is great. Um, so, yeah, so they, they released that. Um, I figured, well, if, if, the, if they've done the model and they've done the hard part because they like know machine learning, so all I need is um, training data uh, that's analogous uh, with satellite imagery and, um, and maybe we can r find some roads. So that's the first thing I did. Uh, I built a little pipeline to produce training data pretty easily. Um, my notion was, uh, well, you have to send stuff through these machine learning algorithms in, in small patches. Um, so, and it turns out that a lot of, that uh, there's a natural format for getting satellite imagery and OSM imagery in patches, and that is tiles. Um, so these scripts, which you can use, uh, grab, the, um, grab tiles from like an area that you choose uh, from Mapbox Satellite, and um, they grab the OSM QA tiles, uh, and then use Mapnik to render them into ground truth images that look sort of like these ones. Um, and so here, here's a here's an example of that, right? So that's a Mapbox Satellite tile, um, and then there's the rendered ground truth image where I'm just looking, in this case, just looking at rendering the ro the OSM roads that are in that location. Um, and this is also actually an example of the, the first, oops, the first uh, mistake that I made, um, which is that I rendered the, uh, the, the ground truth at one pixel width. Uh, and what I found when I tried, I, I, did, I made like three or four training sets like this. And what I found when I tried to train the model was that it just could not do it. It couldn't learn to draw these super fine lines. Maybe they were misregistered or something like that. Um, and so it took me an embarrassingly long time to realize that that was probably the issue. Um, and, uh, and, but, but luckily, the training scripts, uh, the, sorry, the data prep scripts um, that I had built kind of gave me a really easy way to change it. So this is, this is how I like, declared how I wanted the ground truth 
um, data to be generated from OSM. You can see like a map NIC filter there, right? Um, all I had to do was change the one to a five and regenerate. Um, and then I finally started getting some interesting results. So here's the here's a few examples of um, of the the new ground truth uh, the new data um, with the larger ground truth images there. Okay, they're a little bit wider. Um, and I, oh, I should say that the, the images that you're seeing here and the rest that you'll see in this presentation are these are not actually from the training data because an important thing in machine learning is that you have to not um, is that oh I'm out of time. Um, sorry. Yeah, but the, I, I, I'm much. No, but I, I'm much more interested in your questions than anything I have to say. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll um, skip a few things. Um, so, so basically, these are not the images that it was trained with because you don't want to know whether it memorized the answers. You want to know whether it actually learned something. Okay. So, um, this is the first. Um, set that did anything. Here it is after a few hours of training. Pretty cool, it's seeing some stuff, but it's like, it has not learned that roads are narrow things. It's like this weird cloudy stuff. Um, but, hey, I think it might have found a road that wasn't an OSM, so that's like promising, right? Um, here it is after a few more hours of training, I think probably about a day of training, and it's gotten a little bit cleaner, right? Um, but the problem is that this was trained with a random sample across the whole US, which, is, which means basically all rural, because if you throw a dart at the US, you don't hit cities, right? Um, and so, yeah, when I tried it in Seattle uh, earlier this week, it totally, it did not do a great job, right? So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to Seattle. Let's, let's retrain, but just with images from Seattle. Okay, so here's, here's some of those. Uh, so new training set, just in Seattle. Much better, right? So this is after, again, just like three or four or five hours, and then these on the, on the very right are looking pretty good, and that's after about a day and a half of training. So not too, a day and a half of training on an AWS G2 instance, is a, a GPU instance is like, you know, 20 bucks or something, I don't know, not too bad. Um, interesting, here's a way that it, do, even though it's doing pretty well, here's a way that it fails. It thinks the lanes and parking lots are roads, right? Oh, oh I, yeah, so are they? I don't know, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, if that's what we want, then we can keep it like that. If we wanted to make it learn a little better, we could use polygons around the parking lots in the training data, maybe, to learn, so that it could learn the difference. Um, here, on the other hand, here's something pretty exciting. This is a, maybe the most exciting thing to me. Um, check out this road here, where you've got this deep shadow across the road, right? Um, the model just doesn't even care. It just, it's like, oh, shadow, whatever. I just draw a road anyway, right? Um, yeah, uh, and I guess I'll just say like a, a final thing here is that um, uh, he, one of the problems I've had is how do I assess how well my model did? Um, because the training data I'm using is from OpenStreetMap, and so the best I can do is say how correct is it compared to OpenStreetMap, but when OSM is missing a road, then my, the model gets counted off Poor guy. Um, for, for doing something good, right? Here it is, drawing a road that's not an OSM, and it's getting actually a worse correctness score. So that's something that I, I would, that's one way we can really improve this, I think, is by getting like some place where we, ha where we know we have really complete data and using that for training. Um, yeah. Oh, this is where I'm supposed to do a demo. Okay. Um, why don't I uh, stop for questions, though, because who knows if this demo is going to work, and I really do want to take at least like one or two. Can this uh, training system be used to detect something that's not as thin as a road, like perhaps a pool or something block-shaped? Yeah, good question. Um, I haven't tried it on too much else because I, I just haven't had time yet. This has sort of been between projects that I've been doing this, but um, uh, I did start trying it on buildings, and it's, it looked like it started working, but wherever I was trying it, the, the OSM building data was really incomplete. And that made the model it made it really hard for the model to learn because it kept getting negative feedback when it was getting like I was just saying, right? So with with the right data in the right place, yes, definitely. Thanks. Um, have you tried this much with rural?
rural areas that are unpaved, like forest roads or trails or anything like that? Uh, no, but it's it's like that's actually the reason I want to do this is I'm not that interested in automatically tracing roads in places like the US where we have a lot of resources to do it. Um, I think similar to what the Facebook um, folks were saying, you know, this is like the most interesting when we can use it to help us get places that are not mapped mapped better. Um, so uh, this model does not perform well if you try to like the one that's trained in Seattle does not perform well if you take it to like, you know, Egypt or something like that. Um, but I think if we train it on places that look sort of similar, uh, then it really can. This, I think this shows that we can make that happen. Um, so it's just a matter of getting the right training data. Um, do you think this could be used to learn the directionality of the road by maybe looking at the angle, the way the cars are heading and things like that? Oh yeah, I, the, the direction of the cars, that's an interesting point. Yeah, I, I had thought about maybe um, adding telemetry data in and somehow using that together with the road network data to, to do that kind of training. But yeah, the, even the visual direction of the car might be an interesting way to do it. Hi, uh, I was wondering if you need help with this. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk later. Yes, uh, yeah, it's all on GitHub and it, the contributions are very, very welcome. Yeah, um, we're also hiring. Oh, the, by the way, I clicked a few times. That, that right, this is actually the the model is live on a server, um, and when I click, it's sending the image up, and it's getting, this is not canned, like it's getting the, the live prediction back. Um, and it's not as fast as I want it to be, but it's working. Hi, hello. Let's go, let's go eat lunch. I have a question. Oh, okay, sorry, one more thing, okay. and then we'll eat lunch. Uh, I like a map a lot. So, suppose if you work in ArcMap, ArcMap uh, 10.8, if uh, you to hide layer using geometry, to draw geometry using gradient tools to make the yellow. Um, in ArcMap, in ArcMap, you draw geometry oh, using... Oh, in ArcMap? Yeah. Oh, I don't... Uh, I will be compared to open street map data. Mm. If data hack to the map, um, the map look nice. Oh, are, are you saying that we could use, we could clean up the output and make yeah. it? Yeah, I, and actually I really want to, um, I also want to get, another next step is that I want to vectorize the output um, from this because it's a raster and get a clean vector image that could actually be used as an initial, initial um, traced thing. Yeah. Okay. So once you're uh, recognizing the roads, is that, getting converted to lines or a, polyg a polygonal shape of the roadbed itself? Uh, it's, it's a, as of now, it's getting converted to neither. It's literally, that's actually just an image overlay um, because that's what the, because really what this neural network is doing is it's, it's actually just doing an image transformation. I mean, it's a crazy one, right? It's actually just doing a bunch of matrix math on the images and somehow it's taking this very interesting, complex image, the actual image, and it's producing this, this like yellow raster, right? Um, so, I, I mean, I think it, it's vectorizing something like this. Now that the lines are coming out pretty clean, vectorizing it is not that hard. Back in those cloudier, weird, earlier images, like when I first started getting those, I was like, yeah, we're never gonna be able to vectorize this and get anything good. But now that it's like this crisp, I think it's doable. And I think actually the Facebook folks, it sounds like they've got it working. So, um, yeah, I would use that if you wanna open source it. Okay, let's go eat. <laughs>